It's always a special thing when Google launches a flagship Pixel in India. And with this new Pixel 7, my expectations were really high. I reviewed the baby Pixel, the Pixel 6a, a few months ago, and I really enjoyed my time with it. That's mostly because the Pixel series always represents the best of Android, how Google intends it to be. And that's what the Pixel experience has always felt like in the past. But, and this is the biggest of buts, the Pixel 7 is different. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why. Hey guys, you're watching the EJ Tech Show, I'm Soham, and if you do enjoy this video, don't forget to smash that like button and do subscribe to the Editor G channel for more reviews like this one. One thing I really like about the Pixel 7 is its design. Google always makes sure that its Pixel devices stand out from the rest and this Pixel 7 is no different. In this snow-coloured variant, the phone looks very classy and the signature band across the rear cameras is now a very pronounced, chunky bit of brushed aluminium. It's very well integrated because it spills over into the sides of the phone, which are also done up in the same matte silver finish. The whole device isn't too large or bulky. In fact, I quite enjoyed using it without a cover as well. The glass back is glossy, so there's a decent amount of grip here, and the white color doesn't show up a lot of fingerprints either. It's just shy of 200 grams, so it's pretty well balanced in terms of weight as well. The Pixel 7 doesn't come with a headphone jack, that's no surprise, but I am a bit disappointed with the lack of dual SIM connectivity. You can still use one physical SIM and one eSIM together, but there's no way to use two physical SIM cards together in this phone. Also, like the Pixel 6a, there's no expandable storage here, so if you do end up needing anything more than 128 GB, you'll have to upgrade that cloud storage subscription. I'll admit, it is a bit odd to see that Google has excluded Indian buyers from the higher storage variants which are available in international markets, just not in India. There is, however, an IP68 rating for dust and water resistance, which is always good to see. Also, both the front glass on that display and the back glass are Gorilla Glass Victors, so feel free to drop test this phone once you buy it. The Pixel 7 sports a 6.3-inch OLED display with a full HD Plus resolution. In terms of color reproduction, it seems similar to the Pixel 6a's OLED screen, but there's two main things that set it apart. For one, it gets much brighter under direct sunlight, and second, the screen refreshes at 90Hz. It's not as smooth as the 120Hz LTPO panel on the 7 Pro, nor does it have a higher QHD Plus resolution, but I guess Google wanted to limit those features to the Pro model. In fact, if you want to see what the Pixel 7 Pro is like, you can head over to Deepit's review, I'll have it linked somewhere in the description. Anyway, the Pixel 7's display is more than adequate for all your day-to-day -day needs, whether it's content consumption on Netflix or graphic-intensive gaming. The screen runs smooth and straight throughout. Another big plus is support for HDR10 HEVC on Netflix, which means HDR content on the app can be watched in all its glory. All that aside, the bezels are quite noticeable and chunky, and that bottom chin is thicker than the rest of the bezels all around. Still, it's good to see that the in-display fingerprint scanner is quick to unlock and rarely gave me any trouble during my usage. Google also made it a point to mention that the Pixel 7 series gets an always-on display, which works just as well as before, and the screen on and off animations are still the best in the business. The experience of both waking the phone and putting it on standby look great every time you do it, and it's the little details like this that make the Pixel experience what it is. Now, the camera system is one of the main reasons to buy a Pixel device, and the Pixel 7 gets the same 50 megapixel primary sensor that we previously saw on the 6 and the 6 Pro. So, how does it perform in the real world? Well, the answer isn't so simple. See, Google's biggest advantage isn't hardware, it's software. And for years, the processing on Pixel devices has been so good that Google didn't really have to upgrade the cameras. The processing was just that good. But that performance seems to have hit a ceiling because I, for the life of me, couldn't see a major difference between the Pixel 6a and the Pixel 7 in terms of camera performance. Pictures taken with the Pixel 7 in outdoor situations were always good, with accurate colors, excellent dynamic range, and even good depth of field when slightly close up to objects. There's a decent amount of sharpness in images. In fact, some images end up looking over-sharpened even, especially ones taken with the portrait mode. In mixed lighting conditions, results were as expected. Balanced colors, not a whole lot of grain, and overall pleasing images. Even in low-light situations, this camera system works perfectly well, especially due to Google's tried-and-tested night sight. 
Dark spots are reduced, the overall image is brightened up quite well and grain is kept to a minimum. There are however two things I would like to point out. Number one, I wish Google had included an anti-reflective coating on the camera housing to reduce lens flare because that was a prevalent issue in nighttime shots and even in some shots taken indoors. The second is the point of diminishing returns, which is where I think Google's nighttime performance has finally reached. It seems that the competition has caught up so much in nighttime photography that it didn't feel like the Google Pixel 7 was offering me shots that would be unthinkable for any other smartphone to take. That being said, this is still a very good point and shoot camera system which will give you a good shot 95% of the time. Even the ultra-wide sensor performs quite well, with a fair bit of consistency in terms of color reproduction when compared to the primary sensor. I'm also happy to report that the Pixel 7 gave me excellent results in one major area where the Pixel 6a lacked, videos. Contrast in videos is nice and punchy, colors are almost always correct, and there's even a good amount of detail, especially at 4K 60fps. OIS helps immensely, offering very stable footage even while walking, which was good to see. Video quality didn't really dip even in mixed lighting and indoor conditions, and even though white balance did seem to recalibrate itself at times, the end result almost always ended up looking good. Apart from all this, the Pixel 7 also packs in some cool features in the camera app, like the long exposure mode and action pan, both of which let you express your creativity even further. You also have cinematic blur for videos, which gives you this artificial depth effect, and it worked pretty well for the most part, but I still think it'll take an update or two until Google is able to make it look more realistic. But enough about the rear cameras. What about that front camera? Is that any good? Well, it's a 10.8 megapixel sensor embedded in a centrally aligned hole punch. It does a decent enough job of capturing faces in brightly lit conditions and gives similarly good results in mixed lighting conditions. However, low light performance isn't the best in the business and overall pictures with the front camera tend to look a little soft and lack detail, regardless of the lighting conditions. Still, there is support for 4K video recording with the front camera, which only a handful of Android phones can boast of, so that's a good thing to see on the Pixel 7. When it comes to performance, the Google Pixel 7 runs on the new Tensor G2 chip, which has been developed in-house by the good folks at Google. As far as day-to-day -day performance is concerned, the Tensor G2 is right in line with other flagship chipsets out there. Little to no lag, smooth multitasking, and more than decent gameplay even on graphic-intensive games like Call of Duty Mobile. It is worth pointing out though that the chipset does seem to be a bit prone to overheating. For example, any time I tried to shoot in sunny conditions for more than a couple of minutes in 4K 60fps, the camera app would automatically stop recording once the chipset got too hot. Anyway, for everything else, the Tensor G2 is absolutely fine, and in any case, Google's improvements in this new chip are aimed more at machine learning than outright performance. For example, Tensor G2 enables features like Unblur, which can take all the pictures in your library that aren't in ship shape and correct them to make it look like a more pleasing image. Then there's the Magic Eraser and Real-Time Transcription, both of which we've seen earlier, but both now come with some improvements to make them perform better than ever before. Then there's the software, which has always been a highlight of the Pixel experience. Stock Android, just the way Google intended. The Pixel 7 runs Android 13 out of the box with all its little improvements to performance optimization. The look and feel of the interface remain mostly similar, and I'm still annoyed that I can't have the brightness toggled right there the moment I swipe down the notification shade. It's still two swipes away. Also, before I forget, the Pixel 7 only comes with 8GB of RAM, unlike the Pixel 7 Pro that gets 12GB of RAM as standard, but honestly, it handled multitasking and apps in the background just fine. No real complaints here. 4,355 mAh, that's how big the battery on the Pixel 7 is, which is, in all honesty, quite respectable. Even with heavy usage during my testing period, it gave me around a day's battery life with the 90Hz refresh rate and AOD turned on, and that's about as much one can ask from a battery this size. Charging speeds are capped at 30 watts, which is not the fastest we've seen from Android phones recently. Now, 30 watts isn't all that slow, but the way this phone charges up isn't very efficient if you're looking for a quick top up. Zero to full takes nearly two hours, even though the phone indicates around one hour 35 minutes when you plug it in, which makes me think Google could let it charge faster if it weren't trying to preserve the longevity of the battery unit. 
Honestly, this is a phone you're better off charging overnight and you may also want to make use of all the battery optimization and power saving modes to make sure you get the maximum juice on a single charge. Still, there is both wireless charging and reverse wireless charging, so those are a couple of feel-good flagship features that I'm glad Google hasn't reserved for just the Pro variant. At 59,999 rupees, Google has priced the Pixel 7 quite fairly for the Indian market, and it's a welcome change from their pricing strategies in the past. However, due to the absence of Pixel flagships in India for four long years, the competition has more than caught up, and it's hard to call this the undisputed champion of the under 60k segment. What it is, though, is a great alternative, and a compelling one at that. 